Today's trip is brought to you by three little fluffs who are very impatient to get up this hill. We're at Skinner State Park. We are at the bottom heading up to the conglomerate rock. And if you were here with us on the trip, you would notice that these are old Native American hunting grounds. Hopefully today, we just left our smaller trail. We're heading up our blue blazes. And as we go up, I can't help thinking about how this used to be all connected down to Manhattan. And this whole area that we're stepping on used to bounce back and forth between North America and Africa, which is why we're going to see some columnar basalt very soon. Some of our favorite things on the trail. As we pass by this dead tree, what do you think are some things that have eaten this tree? Wow, check out these holes. Ew, there's bugs in them. That's fairly disgusting. All right, the dogs wanna keep going. Up the hill we go. As with any time you are hiking, do what the dogs do. Make sure you stay on the trail. You do not wanna to add to the weathering that happens along trails. Oh, here he comes. You staying on the trail? See where he is right now? This is not where you should be. Nope. So as we've been hiking along, we've been seeing small rocks like this. See, that's not that big. And we've maybe been seeing some outcroppings like this. But then, as we turn the bend, we see the mighty conglomerate rock. Let's go observe closely, shall we? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have made it all the way up to our first stop. This, that Maya is closely observing, is the mighty conglomerate rock. You absolutely know this is a sedimentary rock. Look at how many other things make up this rock. I'm noticing big gouges here with layers and bugs, which is gross. But there's another rock right here, and we have some other minerals in the rock that makes up this huge rock. I gotta back up to get the whole thing in the shot. Oh my goodness. Still going up the hill. Look at how big this rock is. Now as we're here, if you meander your way around the rock, you'll notice that on one side of the rock, there's not a whole lot of moss and there's a lot of sunshine. But as we turn to the other side of the rock, look, we got like ferns growing out of this. We got plant life. Why do you think there's more plant life that happens on this side of the rock? than the other side of the rock. Just like in Dora the Explorer, I want you to call it out. <laughs> well, on this side of the rock, it's facing downward. That's a huge hill we just hiked up. It's facing downwards and it's not getting as much sunlight as the other side. So water and other minerals stay on this side of the rock for the grasses, the moss, and the ferns to grow. Check out this rock over here. Look at that, look at that rock. Look at that spider web. It's disgusting. So as we learned, we learned about ice wedging, right? So look on this side of the rock. See this big, where's my finger? See this big crack in the rock right here? Water is getting into this crack. Every winter it's getting into the crack and it's freezing. It's freezing and expanding. Eventually, this whole side of the rock is going to fall down. So, Tech, are you thinking about how did this rock get here? What do you boys think? How did this rock get here? Well, we have a couple of theories. One theory is that it, the top of the mountain's up that way, is that it fell from the top of the mountain and it got eroded away and whatever was holding it to the top of the mountain was weathered away, eroded, and Boom, 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 <laughs> fell down here. Another theory is that glaciers deposited this rock here during the most recent ice age. Check out how many rocks make up this rock. This is a sedimentary rock. Really important, sedimentary rock. Now, as we're here, we can also notice, look at what the Parks Department has set up. Now we talked a lot about weathering, but what we didn't really talk about is how much weathering happens because of humans and animals. But look at what has happened here. The Parks Department has set up a wooden block 
and extra rocks to divert the water down this way. So over time with all of us, hey, there's my, hi, all of us stepping on the trail, wearing away at all the rocks and the soil on the ground, we don't want to add to it with the water. So the water is being rerouted down the hill that way so that it protects the mighty conglomerate rock. Speaking of weathering, look how weathered away this rock is. It's very smooth. Smooth because we keep stepping on it. That rock on the side, not as smooth. It's because of all of the weathering that happens due to humans. We are very invasive as I walk up this trail. Here's another weathering preventer. See how it's kind of built up a little bit here? The water gets routed down that way. That helps preserve the trail that we are on. We're almost to the road, see you soon. All right, here we are, we're along the road. We came up that trail over here, spit out on the road, and we walked up a little ways, maybe about 100 yards, 50 yards or so. And we come across some giant basalt deposits. If you notice, if I can get low, down here, see how the basalt almost has a column-like structure to it? That's because this, ladies and gentlemen, is columnar basalt. Some rocks are really small like that. Some rocks are really big like this. And we got some more up there. Ooh, we got a little camera jumping now. All right, the bridge is up there. We're gonna stop one more time and look at some epic layers. Can't go 10 feet without some more glacial deposits. Basalt, 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 more basalt. As we walk along the road, ooh, it looks like Ari was here, but look at all these uh, pieces of rock that have fallen off of the columnar basalt. All of these pieces, this is all basalt, ladies and gentlemen. It all has eroded away. There's a larger deposit up there, but we just walk along the road. Bridge is coming up, doggies are leashed, extra safety. So much walking along the road. So we're going to take a little rest. We're going to stop at this bridge and look at some rock layers. Wow. Look at this rock face. This is straight up, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we learned a lot about uprising. We learned a lot about rock layers. Now, just like Dora the Explorer, where are the youngest layers? I'm waiting. You're right. The youngest layers are at the top. These down here are the oldest layers of this rock. Now, as you look, you can notice some sedimentary rock in with the basalt rock. And that's because over time, layers and layers of different kinds of rock got deposited on each other because of igneous, or excuse me, volcanic excitement, volcanic uprising volcanic intrusion, we can see both kinds of rock here. You can see these kinds of rocks all along, all along Route 91, and you can see them as you hike up here. We got a car coming, so we're going to stop, and we'll talk about the MM Trail when we get there. Oh, check out this silt stone. Look at these layers here. So, river silt or maybe even ocean silt was deposited millions and millions of years. And then you might say, yeah, but there's no ocean here. Do you see an ocean? I sure don't. And that's because of the uprising. Remember, this piece of land is the same piece of land as Manhattan, all the way down the eastern coast. And that piece of land bounced back and forth between Africa and North America a few times before eventually crashing into North America, well, modern day North America, and creating the Appalachian Mountain Range. Here we go, we got some more siltstone. Wow, look at that. That's very cool, very cool. So this is why we see this here. We see this here because this used to be covered in an ocean. We used to be an ocean. 
or this area used to be an ocean. So we're coming up to the MM Trail, and we'll just do the same segment right here. Now, the MM Trail is called the Monadnock Metacomet Trail, and that connects uh, New Hampshire to Connecticut. You can hike all of these trails piece by piece and end up in either New Hampshire or Connecticut. We got some people coming down the trail, so we'll just observe some rock layers again. Now, Metacomet was a, uh, also known as King Philip, and King Philip, hi, King Philip was a Native American chief, and this is part of his retreat from Springfield in 1675 um, during the King Philip's War. Now, the King Philip's War is when the Native Americans went to attack Springfield. Um, and this time period, um, this is when most of the settlers uh, ended up sort of taking over the land. And percentage-wise, this was the deadliest war in American history. So we're about to head up this trail right here. This is the MM Trail. So as you, anytime you hike around here, if you see white blazed trails, you are hiking the MM Trail. Pretty cool. We're gonna wait for these people to go. This is the hardest push. This is about a hundred, well, I don't know, how much farther we got? Maybe a quarter of a mile up. Yup. We're going up. At the top, we're gonna be huffing and puffing. It's okay. Cardio is good for you. You're on my glacial striations. Move. Come here. Okay. Um, so we're on our last push to the top. I'm huffing and puffing a little bit, so excuse me. But check out all these scrapes here. These scrapes are caused by the immense friction and pressure caused from the sediments that the glaciers picked up. So imagine having a mile of ice above you right now and all of those giant pieces of sediment scraping against this rock. That's a lot of pressure. That's way more pressure than just doing your homework every night. <laughs> Gosh, I don't think I'm gonna make it. This is so far up. Yes, so if you guys come back, you absolutely can drive a car all the way up to the top. The road we were on goes all the way to the top. We can't take the road up because buses can't do it. It's too steep. But this looks like stairs. They're kind of like stairs. Oh my goodness, we're almost there. At the top of the mountain, there's a very interesting monument. And this monument is from World War II. What happened was, I don't know if you can see that. So way in the distance, can you see that? Uh, it looks like a flat piece, almost like dirt over there. Um, so over that away is Westover Air Force Base. And these guys came out of Westover Air Force Base and were training. And they were training in super dense fog. Ooh, let's bring us back to the water cycle, shall we? So the land was warm, the air was cool, and they had super dense fog. And these guys could not see this mountain, and they crashed right into the side. There's one propeller here, and there's another propeller on Mount Tom, very similar looking monument. Um, but yeah, they, uh, they didn't have radar at the time, and this happened a lot, both here and over in Europe where planes would not be able to see anything and they would crash into each other, they would crash into mountains, they would crash into the countryside because they could not see from the fog. So these are all the men who were on that plane in on May 27th of 1944. War ended a year later. Okay, so here we are at the porch. We are staring over the Pioneer Valley looking at the Connecticut River. To our right, meaning a little north, the river takes a massive bend. So see how it's turning? Follow it along to the left. Right up there, you can see like a bridge. There we go. See like a bridge. I'm going to zoom in a little bit over here. You can see that bridge. The town of Hadley actually pushed this river, exposing fantastic farmland right there. That's the town of Hadley. That's pretty cool. Um, now, it is a beautiful day, and on beautiful days, you can see Mount Greylock way over there in the distance. Mount Greylock is the tallest peak in Massachusetts. If it's a cloudy day or it's a little humid, a little foggy, you cannot see it. So what a great day for this. Um, 
looking that way to our south, that is the Mount Tom mountain range. And we're going to go ahead over to the other side of the, of the, uh, the big white house and talk a little bit about Springfield. I'm on the other side of the big white house. So there's the river again. And if you follow the river down, meaning to your right, straight ahead, you are going to see, i got to pull up my glasses here, you're going to see Springfield way down there. See those two buildings? One's the gray one, that's the Mass Mutual building, the, or the tan one. The other one is glass. Then you see a couple of little ones to the left of it, and then one more big one way to the left there. That's the Springfield Armory. George Washington chose Springfield for the to hold... I believe it was half of the weapons of the United States before they were the United States, the 13 colonies, back in um, the Revolutionary War days. Now, it's on the river, so it's got easy access. Um, it was far enough away from New York and Boston where something happened in New York and Boston that it, we would be protected here. Um, also, to the north is Canada. And we have this mountain range. We just hiked up part of it. And there's the rest of the range. There's Mount Tom and extended down. And we'd be protected from any invaders from Canada um, during the, which is where most of the Native Americans ended up after we kind of kicked them out of here. Um, so some really great geography, some great geology, and some great history, all from the top of Mount Skinner. Now I got to get out of here because there's some bees hanging around. And as you all know, I don't handle bees well. But one last thing, one more thing, there's Westover Air Force Base also. Yeah, seeing so much. On a super clear day, I can see it from here, but on a super clear day, that, ladies and gentlemen, is Hartford all the way down there. You can see all the way to Hartford on a clear day. We're heading back down the mountain as we head on down this awesome trail here, the Blue Blaze Trail. We see an epic example of columnar basalt. Look at those columns right there. Can't get any more beautiful than that. Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, we have found the devil's football. Check out this huge specimen of columnar basalt. This is a giant igneous rock. So another question, you might say, how did this rock get here? Well, we're at the bottom of another big hill. So there could have been some erosion, some weathering that dislodged this massive piece of columnar basalt from the top of the mountain. We saw an awesome piece of columnar basalt up at the top. Maybe this came from that. Make sure you walk around this. You can see the bottoms of the columns. Well, what we say is columns, but this is just what makes this rock. Well, that concludes our tour of Skinner Mountain. Hope you had a good time. Today's trip is brought to you by three little fluffs who are very impatient to get up this hill. We're at Skinner State Park. We are at the bottom heading up to the conglomerate rock. And if you were here with us on the trip, you would notice that these are old Native American hunting grounds.